see my car here taking a brutal beating out here on the long lonesome road completely encrusted with salt there on the front on the sides there has some serious ice formations some uh, stalactites forming along the bottom yeah this car takes a beating out there on the uh, long lonesome road hey you all in good morning Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south. More specifically, uh, we are in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, had the plans here for this Choose My Adventure road trip. We did a, we did a solid week of Choose My Adventure, but then this uh, Arctic blast covered the United States. Pretty much everywhere in this country is covered in freezing weather and snow right now and apparently there's a second arctic blast coming through as well i made the decision we're gonna head south we're gonna we're gonna get away we're gonna get away from this snow get away from this cold weather and so far i've been unsuccessful drove to uh, jackson mississippi last night thought maybe we could at least get out of the snow out of the ice probably not going to be warm but man i was dead Raw. They, we are still, you can see snow scattered upon the ground. It is, uh, it's 30 degrees now, so maybe warming up just a little. Um, I know when I got up this morning, I had a, a, a drink, a fast food soda left in my car that was completely frozen solid. I had some cans of soda that I opened up and were pretty much slush on the inside. So some brutal cold weather, even here in Southern Mississippi. Now, I do think we're going to continue to uh, to try to head south to to the the, the warmest part of the country, uh, southeast from here. Um, I think going anywhere else it just doesn't make any sense. Everything's snowy, everything's cold. Um, probably most attractions are going to be closed due to inclement weather. So we'll just do our best. We're going to head southeast and see uh, what happens. But of course, one thing I like to do when the weather is cold, when the weather's icy, when you have these slick, icy sidewalks, is to do some indoor museums. So we have come out here to the uh, Mississippi Museum of Natural Science. I love a good uh, natural history museum. And this is a very special natural history museum. They have a... Uh, very special resident here on the inside. I hope he's still here. I'm, I'm, I got my hopes up that we can see uh, see our friend again today. But uh, let's check out the Mississippi Museum of Natural Science. And as we enter the Mississippi Museum of Science greeted by these three deer prancing through the forest. I guess all the exhibits are uh, downstairs. We'll head down here. Then down here greeted by some hanging bones. We have the ancient toothed whale there. He looks like some sort of terrifying sea monster. And tons of prehistoric skeletons here. You can see uh, the ground sloth. This is Jefferson's ground sloth. I'm a big fan of giant ground sloths. I find it very interesting how something can go from like a towering beast to being just a little cuddly lump that sleeps in trees 23 hours out of the day. Got a uh, saber-toothed cat down here. And man, I'm glad that uh, glad that my cat's teeth aren't that big. See some of the much larger extinct versions of uh, current animals. That's a bobcat skull, and I guess their prehistoric ancestor, the American lion. There, you can see how much bigger that is. And here we have our our modern day beaver skull, and that is the ancient giant beaver which you can just imagine the sort of uh, 
logs that could rip through. See a timeline of ancient beasts here. The Devonian period, 359 to 419 million years ago. We have the Placoderm, which, I don't know, I find the Placoderm one of the most terrifying uh, ancient skulls. Not only is it a genuine sea monster, but I think it's one of the only skulls that like has eyes. Like, for some reason they have like eye bones. Like, who has eye bones besides the Placoderm? Oh, check this out. This is fitting. There is the Mississippian period, which is 323 to 359 million years ago. Wonder what was going on in uh, Mississippi during the Mississippian period. Oh, you see the theropod dinosaur there. Just all these other <laughs> ancient beasts, the Mosaurus there. There's the teeth. I don't know, maybe they, just, maybe they just don't make things as terrifying as they used to. As we get closer to modern times, yeah, see the animals become a lot more cuddly. The woolly mammoth, the giant beaver. We have uh, Mississippi's endangered species here. I notice they have a manatee skeleton up there. I, uh, I did not know Mississippi had manatees. Certainly you don't have manatees swimming in the uh, Mississippi River, but I guess Mississippi does touch the ocean, so I, I imagine you could get some manatees. And uh, that's a bald eagle there. You might not recognize him without his bald head, but I think it's the younger bald eagles don't develop the white on their uh, on their heads. See the gulf sturgeon there. And even the uh, the black bears, I guess, are uh, endangered here in uh, Mississippi. This is vanished here today, gone tomorrow. There's animals that are no longer uh, in the area. And uh, some animals that are no longer in any area. There's an actual taxidermied passenger pigeon, which is pretty amazing. That's a, an extinct animal. One time it was an animal that was just... Um, in overabundance. They said they would black out the skies, but people began shooting them and, and killing them so indiscriminately that eventually there was simply none less. They went extinct in 1914 when uh, when the last passenger pigeon Martha died at the uh, Cincinnati Zoo. Uh, you can actually see Martha. She's at the Smithsonian, but um, yeah, it's always cool to see uh, or, or at least just yeah, disarming to see uh, an animal taxidermy that no longer exists anymore. Oh, just notice this door over here. It says take a stroll on the dinosaur trail this way. Oh, okay, so the dinosaur trail is outside. This is warning, icy pavements. Please use caution. All right, all right. I'm gonna go do the dinosaur trail outside. Okay, it's it's getting a little warmer out here. It's not bad. It did say watch for ice. So, uh, yeah, it's a sheet of ice there, but I think mostly it's warming. Yeah, you can see the sun is out. Happy to be out here on the uh, dinosaur trail. Let's see if we can find some dinosaurs. I did not know this was back here. Oh, yeah, you can see it's, it's icy over here, so we're going to have to use uh, some extra extra caution oh uh, yeah look at this we got dinosaurs over here I was just looking at some information they said this only opened in 2022 so a pretty sparkling new dinosaur trail here this is a Appalachosaurus by the way and someone asked me the other day if I'd been to every dinosaur park in the United States, and I have not. I think there's at least a couple. I know there's one in Washington, out on the, the Pacific Northeast I've not been to, but I think I have been to probably 90%. So if anyone knows any like fiberglass dinosaur parks that I've not been to, please leave a comment in the comment section. I'd like to try to visit all of them. I think that could be a, be a new goal of mine. It's the Chasmosaurus there. 
have a triceratops type dino. See the baby dino lurking underneath. You know, I thought we were gonna, <laughs> I was going to the museum because I thought we could do an inside activity, but you know, you don't say no, you don't say no to dinosaurs, even in the cold. This is a Eotractodon. See the mother Eotractodon there with her little baby Eotractodons popping out of their eggs. All right, we got a snowy, icy bridge there. Okay. The ice is melting, I can tell, but you can still slide on it. This is the Notosaurus, and the special thing about the Notosaurus is that you may climb on this dinosaur only. The other one said, do not climb with a dinosaur. The Notosaurus, he's game for some climbing. So, uh, yeah, can't you can't disappoint the Notosaurus. Let's do some dino climbing. Definitely don't want to climb on this uh, pterosaur here. It's hanging from wires on the tree. You'd climb up there, you'd never be able to get back down. Then we have the mighty uh, Triceratops here. He's, uh, he's on guard looking out for any possible T-Rexes that want to come munch on him. Do, uh, is there any T-Rexes out here, Mr. Triceratops? Keeping yourself safe? Oh, I knew it. I knew there was a T-Rex lurking. You could tell by how angry the Triceratops was. Oh, look at him, he's, he's, uh, he's freaking out as his arch rival, the uh, T-Rex. T-Rex only, uh, only lives for one thing, and that is eating Triceratops. Mr. Triceratops, he knows that. As much as I enjoyed the dinosaur trail. Let's head back into the warmth of the museum. Now I think this is a uh, behind the scenes peak, but if you look back in this area, you can see uh, a puppet of blue from Jurassic Park that must be for a special exhibit. See a giant frog there. And, uh, over here, we have uh, Mrs. Cook's office. She was a conservationist that helped help lead to the creation of uh, this museum. We can see her office here, the work that she did on animals. You can see her cabinet there, full of dead birds and dead squirrels. There's some eggs in that drawer. I don't know. You see this giant snapping turtle on the floor. I wonder if that was uh, wonder if that was her pet. This guy here is burning down the forest. But don't worry, he's actually uh, he's actually trying to help. This is a prescribed burn where they uh, do a controlled burning of the forest to uh, to help keep things uh, moderated. It's actually uh, you know forest fires are supposed to occur naturally, but actually humans end up fighting, you know, the, the small forest fires that don't allow them to happen until it gets to the point where these massive uh, forest fires happen. So the prescribed burns actually help quite a bit. A little local wildlife here. Got a tree, tree full of turkeys. Yeah, you can see the turkeys taking flight. 
we saw the display on um, endangered animals and extinct animals, animals that are gone but we wish were still here. Here are animals that are still here that we wish were gone. These are invasive species. The Russian boar was uh, introduced to a game preserve so they could be hunted, but they ended up uh, tearing up and destroying uh, plant life. And the grass carp, which was introduced to help manage overgrowth, but ended up uh, ended up just destroying everything. It's almost as if when we try to when we try to help the situation, sometimes we end up making it worse. Here they talk about tracking black bear. You see this black bear here wearing the, the collar. Probably some sort of GPS feature on it. as the tags on his ears so they can keep track and make sure the bear population is healthy. Of course, uh, the black bear in Mississippi are tied into the creation of the teddy bear. Of course, Teddy Roosevelt was a famed hunter. He traveled to Mississippi to hunt bear. Uh, was not having luck finding a bear to uh, to shoot, and so his uh, his friends tied a bear to a tree, a sad old half unconscious bear tied to a tree, and told Teddy to shoot it, and he declined, saying that that was not sporting, and he did not want to shoot a uh, a bear in that condition. So uh, this gave way to the legend of of, the, of Teddy Roosevelt and the creation of the teddy bear, which we still call them today. Some of the smaller creatures over here. A little tiny baby uh, baby fawn. Of course, always gotta have our possum there. You see, this shows the possum dangling uh, from its tail. They actually don't do that. That's actually a misconception. And, uh, Oh, there's the fox. Chaos reigns. Oh, and there's a, uh, a taxidermied earthworm. So we see this box of turtles here. We head into the aquarium area. Where they have some actual live animals here. There's the big tank there. Of fish. This is to, uh, I guess, this is the fish you would find in the Pearl River, the nearby Pearl River. But there still is some taxidermy in here. You can see this amazing action scene here as this poor little beaver gets chased by this vicious alligator. Oh, check out all these baby turtles. There is so many. Little tiny turtles there. Oh my gosh, look how tiny that one is right there. Turtles like the size of a quarter. Get them all gathering there on the top. That's pretty adorable. See them out here on this log making a turtle pile. Oh yeah, look, it's feeding time for uh, these paddlefish. And see them just swimming around with their mouths open, siphoning in that food. That's pretty amazing. And here it is the uh, crown jewel of the uh, Mississippi Science Museum. This is uh, one of the reasons I wanted to stop by because uh, an absolute amazing creature see there are uh, two-headed rat snake here it looks like he's chilling right now taking a nap it's the cold weather outside snakes you know probably not too active when it, when the weather gets this cold but there he is look at him the two distinct heads there Says that he was found as a hatchling and donated to the museum in 2003. Uh, so he is, he is, uh, he's over 20 years old. I don't know how long snakes go to live, but he's an elderly, an elderly snake. You can imagine, um, imagine maybe he doesn't get around as much as he used to, but I can see him just laying here relaxed, completely comfortable with his two heads, 
She's been able to live a long and healthy life with uh, with two heads. I guess it's a it's a they. It's there's two snakes there. I think that is. I think that that's fair. They have two brains. They are two snakes. So uh, I don't think it's fair to call it one snake. But um, yeah, it's an amazing, it's an amazing testament to to the strange ways of nature. It says that uh, he was, uh, I guess, would have been like splitting the embryo would have been splitting into two uh, two snakes into into. Uh, into twins at some point stopped, but uh, did so in a way that gave him, gave them everything they need to uh, to survive. So good day to you. It is good to see you again, and uh, hope you have a very snaky day. You can see over here in the aquarium area. They have the boat above our heads, like we're almost like we are underwater. You can see the big catfish swimming around the boat. The name of this tableau is A Winter's Night in 1910. And uh, what I like about this is that in this tableau, it looks like the uh, looks like the mountain lion and the possum are actually actually hunting together, like they're like they're. Uh, an odd couple uh, pair of predators. See the black bears here. And a happy little skunk over here in the corner. Oh, we saw the baby turtles over there. We got some baby alligators in, uh, in this tank. Just a big pile of sleepy alligators. Yeah, I don't blame, uh, I don't blame these sleepy animals. I think, uh, I would rather enjoy being in a nice warm bed right now, given the option. Here we have a beaver's den. I remember when I was a kid, I always uh, loved the uh, tableau of the beaver den at the local museum. I just thought the beaver's den must be like the most cozy and warm place in the world. The only way to get in is to go underwater and come up making sure you're extra cozy and safe inside. And they, those do look like some warm beavers. You can see some ice and snow, much like is outside right now, forming on top of the beaver house. But the beavers are nice and cozy inside. It's the seashore here, all the birds gathered along the water. And this uh, raccoon comes out just to have some fun on the beach. And this, uh, this angry bird's like, go get back in the forest. The beach is for birds. Oh, and they do actually have a mature bald eagle down there. All right, it is actually feeling a little bit warmer out here. The sun is shining. Looks like a lot of the snow is melting, so I think we're going to continue, continue southeast, and uh, hopefully it'll get even warmer, and uh, we can avoid this second Arctic blast. <laughs> See a very large cross appearing there on the horizon. Yeah, you can see this massive metal cross overlooking uh, the highway here. We're uh, currently in Florence, Mississippi. Now, I've seen many, many, many of these large crosses that look look similar to this across, across the country. I know a lot of them are built by a man named James Potter, who uh, constructed crosses very similar to this. A lot of them in, you know, the Tennessee area. He's from Tennessee. I can't verify if this is, this is built by him or not. It could be, or it could be uh, built by, uh, by someone else. But uh, yeah, you always see these massive crosses as you are uh, traveling the uh, highways of the United States. Now this cross here is uh, right outside of Barry's Seafood and Catfish House. You can see Barry's Catfish House there, kind of shaped like a barn. So I figure uh, 
figure this is a good place to grab some lunch. Might as well eat some catfish in the shadow of a giant cross. You can see Barry's itself, pretty impressive building. This giant barn, and you can actually see there is another cross there right above the sign. So we head inside, you can see have the yeah, 10 commandments up there on that sign. Oh, and then a replica of the uh, 10 commandments there as well. So a very religious uh, catfish house. Oh wow, look at this. So we come in, we see murals of Jesus' life, the birth of Jesus in the manger, different scenes from his life. Yeah, there's Jesus being baptized, and there he is being crucified. See this dining room in here, inside this barn. Oh, look at that. There's a deer on the roof. And this is pretty amazing here, not expecting this. Up here on the balcony, we have the characters from the Andy Griffith show. The, uh, the uh, citizens of Mayberry here. You can see uh, Andy Griffith there fishing with Opie and Aunt B. Looks like they, uh, they caught something there. And then uh, just standing over here in the bushes with his gun drawn, we have uh, Barney Fife. Yeah, very interesting addition to the uh, religious catfish restaurant. Over here we have the buffet. You see get these like tin plates and uh, lots of food here, lots of vegetables, plenty of choices, plenty of options, plenty of low carb options here. But it does not look like it's all seafood or catfish. We got so looks like we got some uh, chicken livers there. I might get some of those. Some sliced pork, fried chicken, and there's the catfish. This all looks very good. Let's see the uh, diet soda there came in a nice tin cup. Pretty cool. A lot of soda in there. Keeps it nice and cold. And then got all sorts of stuff here. I got some greens, some peas and carrots. They go together like peas and carrots. And then tomato and okra, some uh, green beans, black eyed peas, and some sausage in it as well. Lima beans, so a lot of vegetables. And then for me, I got a little uh, is that a pork chop, meatloaf. There's the catfish right there, and I got some chicken livers. All right, let's dig in. So we'll try some of the catfish there first. Oh my goodness, that is so amazing. I could eat nothing but that catfish. That is so good. Oh, greens are good. Oh, almost forgot. I'm gonna put some of the pepper sauce there on the greens. Oh, that's even better. The peas and carrots. Tomato and okra. Mm. Everything's really good. I mean, lima beans there. There's the uh, green beans, black eyed peas, and sausage. Mm. Good mix there. Pork chop. That's a meatloaf. The meatloaf here has gravy on it. I normally like with the ketchup, but let me, let's try see what this is like. Mm. Again, I like the ketchup better, but that is a good meatloaf. Yeah, this is absolutely wonderful buffet here. It's my favorite, the chicken liver. Yeah, everything is wonderful here. A lot of choices. Delicious country buffet. All right, and I have cleaned plate number one. I may go for uh, go for a little bit more food though. We got some of this peel and eat shrimp. It just looks so pink and delicious. And then got a little more hot food as well. I just didn't see that that blackened catfish. Didn't see that the first time. And I went and got some more liver and some more catfish, more of the fried catfish as well. 
try and stick into this peel and eat shrimp. Again, this, the color on that looks super good. Mmm, oh, that is amazing. Go with some of the blackened catfish. Mm. Yeah, everything. Every, I've loved everything here. Really good stuff. Get some nice diet soda out of the cold tin cup here. And today we have dual membership into the Clean Play Club. It's an absolutely wonderful meal here at uh, Berry's and a very interesting environment as well. I did want to did want to mention there was uh, the buffet was only twenty dollars, so it was a little cheaper than I thought it would be. I think I feel like that's a fairly good price for all that they had, the big spread they had uh, they had here. So absolutely wonderful meal. Loved loved all the food here, but uh, right now, oh, it is getting a little warmer. The sun is beginning to shine a little more, which makes me happy. But it is time to get back on that long, lonesome road. Here outside of Paul's Auto Body Shop, we have a Lightning McQueen looking out into traffic, his buddy Mater. And I don't know these guys here. It's like this big rusty bus. And um, oh my gosh, who's that? This car here has this just soul crushing, ominous gaze. Like he's staring directly into my soul. Speaking of crosses, we have a pair of coffin daffer crosses here alongside the highway. These dogs have chose to bark at me right now. It's all right, dogs. I'm just checking out the crosses. These uh, coffin daffer crosses, you'll see these all along the highways in the United States, especially in the south. You'll see the gold cross in the middle, the two blue crosses on the outside. They were put here by a uh, traveling preacher known as Bernard Coffendaffer, and I always like to keep an eye out for them as I'm traveling the country. All right, dogs, I'll leave. No matter where you go, there's always a dog telling you that you don't need to be there. Stopped off here at Soul Sisters, which is apparently a, uh, a shoe store. They have a giant watermelon out front. Um, I know watermelon is not a shoe, but apparently this used to be a store that sold watermelons. And you know, they want to get rid of an awesome uh, giant watermelon. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's sit in this giant watermelon throne. Stopped off here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. There's something here in this downtown area that I uh, wanted to check out. See over here, 
They're already uh, already decorating for Mardi Gras. They got their Mardi Gras tree on display here in this window. And uh, yeah, the, 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 the thing we're looking for, it's supposed to be just around this area somewhere. Over here at the Sanger Theater, noticed uh, the alleyway here. Decorated, decorated for Mardi Gras as well. You can see the fire escape there, covered in Mardi Gras beads and Mardi Gras flags. You can see the stream there running through the alley. Oh, there's a little mouse there trying to uh, hold on to a life life preserver. Doesn't hope he doesn't get sucked into the sewer. Also, there's a, a narwhal there. You can see this. This random pole here is actually his uh, narwhal horn. A little alleyway narwhal there. It's interesting, uh, interesting alley here. It says, please smile at strangers. I, I sometimes do try to smile at strangers and I feel weird when they don't smile back. I don't know, some, something about it. Oh no, <laughs> chaos reigns. See the rubber ducky there. Yeah, okay, yeah, the whole alley here. Decorated for uh, for Mardi Gras. And uh, who's this right here? This little, little metal alligator. It's, Hi, my name is Alex. The start of an incredible journey begins here. Well, I guess we can uh, take a look and see where there's a, there's a QR code. We can see where Alex's journey uh, takes us. All right, so this is like a scavenger hunt, trying to find the other alligators. This is behind City Hall, next to the bank. Okay, so apparently you go around town and try to find the rest of the alligators. How many are there? Looks like there's 10 alligators around town here. Very interesting. See the tentacles there, offering free hugs, and a uh, a heart designed for love locks. Now Jen is going to kill me because I told her, I told her I was going to start carrying around love locks with me, and placing them. Uh, but I yeah I don't I don't have any love locks. Everyone remind me when I get back home, I need to buy some locks to keep in the car to affix to a love lock point. See, love locks people will put the the name of them and their loved one on a lock and affix it together to lock their love in. And this heart here. A lot of times they do it on bridges, but apparently it's not good for bridges. It, it hurts their uh, stability. So sometimes uh, they'll put up like a heart or something where it's actually designed for love locks. Now, this is what I was looking for, and I guess in some ways, we uh, we found this already. We're here in uh, the Hattiesburg Pocket Museum here in Pocket Alley. So we've been walking, we see all the art here in uh, Pocket Alley, and uh, the Pocket Museum is apparently the smallest museum in Mississippi. Here is the Pocket Museum in this. Uh, in this case here. Now apparently they will rotate out the different uh, items that they keep in the pocket museum. We can see uh, what they have currently. They have these socks, these socks that hold hands. I think they have magnets with them so they, they automatically hold hands. They won't, they won't trip you. And then a uh, cutting board that says, this is where I murder vegetables. Here is a sizzle bacon scented dryer sheets. Also, uh, this is a family blank ease. It's a blanket that will cover your entire family and apparently it will also cover an entire SUV. There is an impossible puzzle. I guess it's just one solid color, 500 pieces. Yeah, I, I probably could not, uh, not manage that. Uh, there's a cryptozoology A to Z. Of course, I'm very interested in the cryptozoology. And there's the marvelous land of Oz. I love, uh, love the Wizard of Oz movie. 
know, it says positive potato and maybe a tiny potato, but I believe in you. Go do your thing. You know what, potato? I will do my thing. Thank you for the encouragement. So yeah, apparently they do have seasonal um, seasonal displays. This is currently on display is uh, the art of regifting. It says these are all presents that need to be regifted. And I don't know, some of these some of these seem like pretty good gifts. I mean, who wouldn't want that uh, plushy plushy seal there? Um, or uh, oh, the book on Oz is pretty good. The books are good. Yeah, some fun stuff. No need to regift this. And you can see lots of little artwork all around the pocket museum you can see on the um the electric box here there is little figures a little guy on a bicycle there yeah a little uh little people here living on top of the power box hey, look at all of them to go with the pocket museum we have the uh, pocket theater right here and uh, look at that, it's like a Viewmaster affixed to the wall. Get your soda and popcorn for your movie, but let's uh, let's see what movie is playing. Oh, okay. There's an actual little movie going on in there. Little, two, little, two little snowmen. Huh. Let's sit here and watch this all day. It's pretty cool. Maybe a like a little stop motion movie. There you go, little snowman. There you see a little car being charged by Red Bull. Oh, there's a, this plant here has got a, a wild plant award for being the most delicate. It says this is Oscar the alley dog right here. It's like a balloon dog. And uh, he's drinking some water. This water is not only frozen, but it has apparently a fish frozen inside of it. Oh, well, here's the pocket art gallery here in this old newspaper box. Oh yeah, a little miniature art gallery. You can see the little patrons, uh, patrons uh, looking at the uh, miniature artwork there. And uh, some more of these little tiny sculptures. Amazing, these are left out in the public and um, it's, it's surprisingly in good condition. Amazing that people have not destroyed this or ruined this. I think that is a, uh, a testament. There's someone skiing on a popsicle there. I definitely approve of all this unbridled whimsy. The picnic table's here, and look at this. This box here, this is full of board games and other, uh, other things you can play with. And uh, it's just you need to return them to the box after you're done playing with them. And it appears that someone spilled a Corona here on top of the trash can, but no, that's just part of the art. You see uh, people relaxing in chairs there um, in the Corona puddle. Tiny mopeds there. And then a library for dogs where they can take or leave a stick or ball. <laughs> uh, looking up there. See a little Lego minifigure looking down on us from that walkway. It's another uh, Lego figure there, but he's all ready for Mardi Gras. I notice there's a bunch of uh, bunch of minifigs over in this area. Yeah, just so much tiny art hidden in this alleyway. See, there's like a church and a. Uh, a dinosaur there. Over here. People crawling all over a giant chili pepper. In the cracks here, see little little workers with ladders. Some firemen right there. And this gutter pipe here says you must be two inches tall to enter enter the gutter pipe. Little, uh, little main street there. It says, Dear 
human giants. Please do not touch us. We should, should we be discovered? How would you like to be pulled out of your comfy world by your head? Yeah, us either. Remind your offspring to watch and whisper around us. We are very sensitive and fragile. So yeah, don't grab the little people by their heads. You know, that's usually good, a good, good advice is to not pull on things and wreck things with your hands. I see it wherever I go that just stuff falls apart because people touch it too much. So uh, try to keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, so many little nods. It's easy to easy to miss some. You have the uh, door there from the show Friends, and then uh, this door here from Monsters Inc. You can see Mike and Sully's hands reaching around. And you see a little mice down there, little mouse holes. Unfortunately, someone left a, a mouse trap there for the uh, for the little mice. The little guy. Painting a, painting a banana yellow. And oh no, have a melted snowman. I think that's the most unrealistic thing here that a snowman would melt in this temperature. Oh, see some, some more plant awards. There's best personality for that wild plant there. And uh, I think I see another plant award here. Oh, that one just says, please do not touch. Weeds have feelings too. So that's a weed, but that doesn't mean you can just pull it out of the wall. Up oh, there, that little guy just got a little sign saying that he's been alive for 805 days. Where'd it go, little guy? Oh, that window says Hattiesburg Pocket Watch. It says 10 minutes to five. Gotta get up in a minute and shell those peas for dinner. It's a quote from Embroidery by Ray Bradbury. The thing is, I guess that actually is a clock because it currently is 10 minutes to five. So I guess it tells the time using literary quotes? That, that's, that's pretty amazing. Oh, there it just changed to another quote. At 4.51, a figure in a cherry red parka exits the library, pulls on her hood, and pushes a snow shovel up and down the front walk. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Dewar. So yeah, it, it, every minute it gives a literary quote that contains uh, the current time. That, wow, this, this place is pretty amazing. It says that a small black spider named Spike lives in this area. A little cold for Spike. He's probably, probably hiding somewhere warm right now. an alligator and that mustard. Yeah, I really love this. The Hattiesburg Pocket Museum in uh, in the Hattiesburg Pocket Alley. I uh, just love all, all you know the the, the the detail here, the fun, um, you know, just the little sculptures. You can spend time trying to hunt everything down. Uh, just a very very nice and unique and quirky uh, quirky vibe here. Some other interesting art throughout Hattiesburg as well, such as this uh, marble statue of four babies attacking a goose. There is a, uh, a September 11th monument here in Hattiesburg. See a replica of the Twin Towers here. But uh, what makes this replica a little different, uh, an interesting artistic choice that they have made for, uh, for this monument is that they included the holes where the, uh, the attacks took place. You can see the hole there in the side of that tower, then another hole there from uh, from the other attack. Uh, it's interesting. I've, I've never seen a monument that incorporated it that way, but um, I don't know. In some ways, it almost makes it more impactful, more of a reminder of, uh, of what happened. What do you guys think? I'm interested to see um, what people feel about this interesting choice here for the sculpture. Leave a comment in uh, in the comment section. There is some musical sculptures here as well. This uh, guitar here is known as the Juke. So you can actually play it. Got the uh, 
a mallet. And strum the guitar there. Here's a uh, alligator, and I guess an alligator xylophone. The shack here with uh, interesting horse folk art there on uh, the top, and I've noticed here in the in the shack. They have like a, um, is that like a guitar amp? I guess you can come and just uh, and hook up your, your guitar to there and play it. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it says open for public use, 10.30 to 10 p.m. It also has a Bluetooth adapter. And um, it says, please turn keyboard off and close lid after use. All right, so there is a keyboard in here. I don't, doesn't look like it's powering on. Maybe they have it turned off for the cold weather. But yeah, it's like a public place where people can come and uh, and play music. It's very interesting. And if you remember the alligator hunt from Pocket Alley, the rest of the alligators are spread out throughout the town. Here's another one of the alligators on the uh, alligator scavenger hunt. He's uh, a family member of the one we saw in Pocket Alley. This is called Summer Thunder. I don't know if this is just, you can touch it. Okay, it's like a sheet of metal, so you can make like thunder noises. And then here is the dinner bell. Put the spoon there. Although I don't need the dinner bell now, I'm still full from uh, from the Christian uh, catfish restaurant. This is a trash can base here. Let's try this out. So thank you for joining me here today out on the cold, long, lonesome roads of uh, Mississippi. I did uh, did have a very long video yesterday. It was like an hour and 20 minutes, and I have no idea how that happened. Um, as far as like the video lengths, the videos are just as long as they are. I don't wake up in the morning and decide... Um, I'm going to make a short video today, or I'm going to make a long video today. I usually have no idea how long the video is going to be until uh, until it actually goes out there, uh, actually comes together. So um, I appreciate some of you said you enjoyed the longer video. I think some of you are annoyed that maybe it's too long, don't have the time to watch it. And, um, you know, I understand both sides, but uh, just for my point of view. I don't know how long this video is going to be. It could end up being long. I, I you know, I just kind of get an idea of some things I want to do. I don't know how long each one's going to take. I don't know if I'm going to stumble upon um, things I didn't plan on. So especially when I'm out here just traveling, doing day-to-day -day vlogs, like you, you never know what's going to happen. It can end up being a super short video. It could end up being a, a really long video, but it's just... It's just what happens. And that's what happened yesterday. I thought there was a mistake when I saw how long uh, the video was. Um, but it's just it's the nature of, of traveling, 
Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a low budget. I'm a, I'm a low budget minimalist uh, as far as my filming goes. I just film what I like. I, I show what I show. Um, and then I just put it together for you guys. And and thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. And the, the, those of you that, that do enjoy the longer videos, thank you for, for sticking with it. Because I know a lot of them are long. And for those of you that want this, the shorter videos, I mean, maybe maybe we can come up with some shorter videos. I don't know. In fact, you know, leave a comment in the comment section. Do you like longer videos or do you like shorter videos? And now I'm really worried this video is super long and I'm going on and on right now making it even longer. But uh, I think I'm going to grab a hotel room here in Hattiesburg. The sun is setting, so it's getting colder. So I figure let's get... Uh, Let's get a uh, get a hotel room, get some rest, and we will uh, we will continue heading southeast in the morning. Um, still have not found warm weather yet. Um, maybe we never will, but um, it, it's probably much more bitter cold in other parts of the country. So thank you for sticking with me. Um, I appreciate it. Um, if you like these videos, please subscribe. You know, I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, other fun stuff. If, uh, you'd like to help support the channel, consider Patreon. Um, it's $3 in order to get a postcard once a month, uh, from me to you. They get sent out every month. Um, and that's, you know, that's been a big thing that's helped keep this channel afloat, as well as the enamel pins in the Etsy shop and the personalized messages on Cameo. If you're interested in any of that, all the information is in the description. And any one of those things really helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Till next time, my friends. This one's in the bag.